Welcome everyone to the month of October. To start our Halloween festivities for the month, I wanted to take a look back at some Flash games that all revolve around the holiday, starting with a childhood favorite of mine, Skating Skeleton. I probably played this game over on Nick.com hundreds of times as a kid. It's an incredibly basic shockwave game, but I actually still enjoyed my little playthrough of it. You play as this little skating skeleton, which Whoa, title drop. As you traverse a moving grid, dodging enemies and collecting candy to get a higher score. You can collect these little red apples to get a boost and be invincible for a short while. Every level adds something, tombstones to jump over for more points, flashlights to regain health, more enemies, with the final level being in endless mode. A uh, pretty fun game, I can definitely see why I played this so much as a kid. And speaking of games that I played a bunch as a kid, Nick.com's Clickamajigs. Oh yeah. These weren't necessarily games as they were more just little interactive things to mess around with. There's a ton of these that existed and Halloween definitely wasn't left out. Pumpkin carving. <laughs> a trick-or-treat simulator where weird little creatures would appear at your door or you'd get pranked. Witch's Brew letting you pick ingredients to mix into some kind of weird concoction. There's also like this whole side puzzle with the secret spell where you have to listen to the sounds the ingredients make and match them to the spell book, which ultimately leads to you getting jump scared by the game. The most iconic not only of just the Halloweens, but probably the most iconic of like all of the clickamajigs in general was Black Licorice. I'd just say that probably too many of us all collectively got traumatized by this game. The whole premise is it's one of those send this to your friends to prank them games. You're handing out candy for Halloween, but you've been warned not to give out the gross black licorice from last year. The kids show up and they're already a little unsettling. These low quality JPEGs morphed and animated of actual children in various costumes. You hand out the caramel candies and until you just can't anymore. These children's hunger can't be quenched. You throw the black licorice in the bag, and then this happens. Black licorice? Quickly slamming the door, this goes on for basically ever, with each kid having their own custom little monster animation and sounds. And honestly, I love going back to this little game for something so short and simple, it absolutely terrified me as a kid and just embedded itself as like a default Halloween memory. Moving away from Nick.com, we have what is basically another clickamajig just from a different site, Monster Defense System. A super short little thing, you have multiple options to get rid of the trick-or-treaters. My personal favorite are the laser and the Ewok attack. Trick or treat. T-Bone's Book of Spells is also basically just a clickamajig, but it is way cruder. You're trying to make a beer spell for this hillbilly whose grandma used to be a witch by randomly selecting these three icons. The wrong spells keep piling up in the background, and Jesus Christ is this just so stupid. Oh dang, God, it's the apocalypse. Oh man, and I never got my beer. Hey, alright, my beer. Oh man, piss warm though. Oh, that sucks. And definitely a big reason why I still love Flash so much. It's just like that edgy teenage 2000 internet humor. For something that's not so edgy though, Skeleton Ragdoll is literally just one of those ragdoll games. There was so many of these ragdoll or like bubble games. You just navigate the little skeleton through all these pumpkins or just let him free fall until he stops. It's super basic, but like, I don't know. These games are like kind of like a stress ball. They're just fun to mess with for a while. If you're looking for more gameplay though, we have Jacko in Hell, a platformer where you take the role of a pumpkin man Jacko while solving puzzles, avoiding traps, and just general platforming. I really enjoy the shadowy environments of this game. This combined with having no real attack and only being able to hide gives it a very limbo feel. I was really enjoying the game until I got impaled right here and then the game just refused to reset. They ask you how you are, you just have to say
say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Jacko and Hell 2, the same game, but sequelized. It's upgraded visually for sure, but I don't know, I kind of preferred the older art style. Regardless, we have new mechanics in this one, like different pumpkin masks and your Hellcrow. You use him to reach areas you typically can and solve puzzles with him, but be careful not to hit the walls or your crow will return to you. And it froze again. <laughs> Well, trying a different platformer, we have Jack Lantern Return to Redemption, a fun little shooter slash platformer. You collect candy and fight your way through the levels. Killing enemies and completing levels grants you with more money to purchase different weapons. The game has a wall jump slash wall stick mechanic that makes the gunplay really fun and more interactive than just simply walking and shooting. However, I found this got me killed more times than I wanted. Overall though, I'd kill a couple minutes with this game again. Pumpkin Run. Another shooter that is just super basic. You play as a pumpkin and I think run left and right collecting candy and shooting enemies. I didn't mind this game at first and thought it was pretty fun until I realized I could just hold attack and walk left or right with zero punishment. I did like, however, whenever you get hit for some reason, there is just a blood-curdling scream. The Headless Horseman's Pumpkin Smash is a game I thought I remembered playing as a kid, but playing it for this video, it uh, it's kind of butt. You just click these pumpkins and they make the same sound effect and animation until you reach 100, only very slightly increasing in speed. It's basically like Aim Labs, but instead of for people who play Valorant, it's for people who shop at Hot Topic. Hunt for Horror was genuinely such a cool game, I had to force myself to stop playing it. It's just some really cool pixel art of tons and tons and tons of various horror icons. And there's some like really deep cuts here too. It gives you a person to find and you can choose to skip it if it's too difficult and as you complete more levels, it'll unlock even harder characters to find. It's less of a game I suppose and it's more of like a Where's Waldo or children's activity book. What's absolutely not a game though is Monster House Costume Creator. A promotional game for the movie Monster House, you can pick a child to create a costume for, and I genuinely don't think that any of these kids are even in the movie at all. Every child has different outfits that are tied to them, and then you can change the colors or designs of them. It's super basic stuff. The weirdest thing though is the option to make a iron printout. Like what kid has ironable printer paper at their house? And what kid wants to put this thing on their t-shirt? It's a super weird promotional game, and getting into more weird promotional games, we have Messi's Halloween Shootout. Yes, the famous soccer player Messi has a Halloween-themed game. I have no idea if this is official or not, but you try to get as many goals in the allotted time, avoiding the goalies and other goalies? I have no idea. This big pumpkin runs by and if you can hit him in the goal, you get more points. But honestly, I broke the goalie and he got stuck in this corner. Then I just started getting barraged by soccer balls before the game ended. No clue what's going on here. The Thrilling Chilling World of Rob Zombie. A Rob Zombie promotional game for what I think was winning like tickets to Universal's Fright Nights. It also has a shockwave rendition of Dragula, which I think I can get away with playing because it sounds like shit and it's only the first couple seconds of the rift. Speaking of shit, look at this game. It's the definition of it. I have no idea what's going on. I'm getting barraged by green hands and spiders appearing out of nowhere. I eventually made it to the next floor, but like this thing just chases me and with nowhere to go, it just runs me down. I'd be surprised if anyone made it further than that. Like this had to have been made as some kind of troll to make people think that they could win tickets to Universal Studios. The Halloween Hunt starts with some super edgy, my dad stabbed me, now I'm a vengeful pumpkin man storyline or something like that. I, I really don't know. It was a lot of reading and I didn't 
didn't care that much. The game is a turn-based RPG. You walk around trying to, I think, solve puzzles and are repeatedly barraged by enemies which for some reason the game doesn't let you see their health. Like, what kind of RPG is like, hmm, I don't know, guess the enemy's health? Anyways, you get money from killing enemies or finding it on the ground that can be used for upgrading your character. You can also turn down or up the enemy encounter chance, but I honestly found this to do very little if not do anything at all. The enemy's design in the actual battle instances are cool though, and I really like this little teddy bear guy, but not long after that I died and decided I was not playing this game anymore. The Halloween Hunt 2 Return to Hell. Graphically speaking, this game is much nicer to look at. The enemy designs, although quite a few are the same here, are a little bit cleaner, all except for whatever the hell this is. It's disgusting and I hate it. Still, my biggest gripe here is, still, my biggest gripe here is you can't see the enemy's health. It makes the game so much more needlessly challenging. Overall, it's the same game as the first with a new coat of paint, expanded upgrades, and just a better sense of gameplay. The combat encounter slider worked a little bit better here, but the noise for a combat encounter now is like this loud, shrilling yell that basically tries to jump scare you every time time you're in a combat encounter. I played this for a little while longer than the first one, but once I died, I had no desire to keep playing. If you had better patience, I could see someone genuinely enjoying this game, but I, however, do not have the patience for it. Toto's Treats is only in this video because, oh my god, please tell me if anyone in my comments used to play like this site's games as a kid because they have a loading theme song. Don't If you were subjected to that as a child for some reason, I am so sorry for your loss of innocence. The game itself is so nothing though, just a cute little monster comes up, demands a candy, and you slide it over to them. I do like the definitely not Nintendo trademarked ghosts in the background though. Undead on Halloween, another game I put in this video as a meme because you play as what kind of looks like the hamburger helper glove. You spray holy water down on the skeletons and try not to let them reach the door. The water gains speed the longer you hold it, but get hit by the heads of the skeletons or these pumpkins and it stuns you for a moment. The pumpkins float around trying to hit you and take significantly more water to get rid of. I actually really enjoyed this game while I was playing it. A fun if not super simple time killer. Trick or Treat Extreme. I actually had a blast with this game. You answer the door and have to use this scanner to determine whether the trick or treater is a kid or an actual monster. The scanner has a grid that you hover around and if it flashes red, you know it's a monster and thus you use the trick box. And if it's seemingly clear, then you use the treat box. As you progress more and more, the grid gets smaller and smaller as you have more squares to look for. The time limit never changes though, making it pretty challenging towards the end. Once you inevitably get attacked by a monster, you get a little newspaper article talking about what attacked you. A solid game. I'll definitely play it again. Potion of Beauty. Artistically, I love this game. The style of everything reminds me of like some spooky children's book. Gameplay wise, you're shown an icon on the left side of the screen and have to add ingredients that matches the type. A water drop equals liquid, a face equals a living creature, etc etc. It honestly gets pretty confusing with what you're supposed to use and makes you think out of the box a lot with a bunch of the things in the environment being able to be added to the potion. It makes for a super fun little puzzle game. Codename Kids Next Door, Trick or Treat, or Trick or Treat Beat. These two are essentially the same game with the only difference being Codename Kids being in one of them and more general Cartoon Network characters being in the other. This on top of different levels for both. I love this game though, I would play it so much as a kid around Halloween and I still enjoy playing it to this day. Basically, you play in this cute Halloween bit world, collecting all the coins, candies, and the bonus coin in every level. The gimmick is you have various costumes you can pick up and switch to. The skeleton has a skeleton key power, opening lock gates. The witch can cast a spell to turn the ghost blocking your way into frogs. Frankenstein can smash garbage cans and boulders. Dracula can fly over obstacles and to higher planes. And the Loch Ness monster can swim through the lakes. 
It's a super fun set of little puzzle games, figuring out what costume you need and where it's at, or like scouring for that last little piece of candy that you're missing. It's one of my Halloween traditions for sure. Moving along to point and clicks, we have Monkey Go Halloween. A part of the classic Monkey Go series of point and clicks, we have a nice little Halloween themed one. I've always loved these games, I think they're fairly challenging and they are all pretty well made. I of course chose the grandpa monkey and this cool little pumpkin hat. Overall, I thought this was one of the easier ones in the series. You are basically working to make this Frankenstein monster, but a pretty fine little monkey go game with just enough of a touch of Halloween to make it festive. Jinx, Dark and Stormy Night. This was a cute little ghost point and click. You're trapped in a mad scientist mansion and have to escape. This was incredibly basic though and wasn't challenging at any point. Like, you don't even have to use the items. If you just have them in your inventory, they'll be used. It's definitely for younger audiences. And while I like the cute art style, I couldn't get over feeling like this was one of those Obama or like Simpsons Saw games. I don't know if I'm the only person who remembers those, but yeah, I might have to like cover those on my second channel or something. Halloween, but with a three instead of an E was technically an HTML5 game, but we're just gonna ignore that. It's a super stylized game, early like Commodore point and click. I'm the worst at these games though, so I did not get very far at all. You start in like this hospital and there's a serial killer on the loose. And while I walked around enjoying the visuals and the two sceneries from the hospital to the victim's house, I could not figure out what to do next and ultimately just turned off the game. I wish I could have gotten further, but I was completely lost. And for our final game, we have Trick or Treat Adventure. A super in-depth point and click where you play as a kid whose parents couldn't care about your Halloween as you navigate your home trying to find objects for the perfect costume and to have the perfect Halloween. There's about four-ish levels, your house, the neighborhood one and two, and then finally hell. I don't want to spoil too much of this game because honestly it's great and it's made by the same guy who made Hunt of Horror and A Bobo's Adventure, so it's just a quality game overall. I really enjoyed playing through it and it was immensely challenging at times and the perfect level of spooky Halloween aesthetics, screwed Newgrounds humor, and just maniac mansion gameplay. Truly a Halloween flash game spectacle. As always, all of my social links are in the description below, and if you're not watching the second channel, um, you should probably go get on that. A special thank you to all my Rat Kings over on Patreon, and with that, I will see you next week for more Rataween. I think that's what we're going with for the name. Bye-bye, pow.